Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. Today's video is the start of a new vlog series that I've been planning for a while and you'll see these dropping periodically through the year. I thought it would be really fun to vlog the experience of reading books that I bought because of other booktubers. I know a lot of you pick up books based on my recommendations, but what you might not realize is that I also buy books based on your recommendations and based on what I see other booktubers talk about. And so I have a bunch of books on my TBR that I've picked up because I've seen other booktubers rave about them. So I am planning a series of these videos, but for today's video I'm going to be reading three books that I bought because of Angela over at Literature Science Alliance. <laughs> If you don't already follow Angela and you read any kind of sci-fi fantasy, you definitely should. I love her. She's not only a wonderful person, but she has great taste in books. She has really interesting, thoughtful, insightful reviews. And she's the last few months been doing this series of videos that I love and find really useful, where she rounds up all of the new releases for the month and gives the lowdown on what different reviewers and booktubers thought about those books so that you can decide if you want to buy them or not. I will link the latest of those videos up above so you can go check it out. I think they're great. She just consistently puts out really awesome content and I've definitely picked up a few books on her recommendation, many of which have gone well, but I've got three books that are on my TBR because of her that I want to read for today's video. It's worth noting that one of these books, it's not just because of her, it's also because of a couple other people like Jocelyn at Yogi with a Book and Audrey from Perpetual Pages, but Angela was a big part of convincing me that I should really pick up Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. I have been meaning to read this for a while. I'm a little nervous and a little intimidated because I hear that it's brilliant and very mathy and might go over my head a little bit, but I did read Yoon Ha Lee's first middle grade novel, Dragon Pearl, and I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. And so I want to give this a try. Angela really loved it and so we're gonna do it in this video. I've been meaning to read it for a while. It's been languishing on my TBR. This video it is happening. The next book that I picked up because of Angela is actually an audiobook. I don't own a physical copy, but I did buy an audio copy and my patrons wanted me to read it and vlog it this month. So I was like, well, okay, I guess that makes this the perfect month to do my books that I read because of Angela video. That book is The Sword of Kaigen by M.L. Wang. This is a little bit of a sci-fi fantasy booktube darling. It's an indie published fantasy novel that a lot of people have really loved. I hear that the main character or one of the main characters is a mom, which is kind of cool to see in fantasy, not something you see a lot of. And I, I don't know a ton about the plot. I do know that people went into it thinking it was set in a completely different world and then found out that it's it's not. It's kind of set in the real world but on an island where there's magic and not the same kinds of technology or some, something along those lines. That is the extent of what I know about Sword of Kaigen except that everybody loves it and I heard Angela raving about it and she said a few things about it that made me think okay I should I should give this a try. So I'm gonna be listening to that one on audio. And then the final book that I picked up because of her is The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Lord. I cannot tell you the number of times I've heard Angela mention this. I know it is one of her favorite books and she talks about it a lot. I don't also remember a lot of the plot. I do know that it is a sci-fi book with a really good romance in it. I don't know that it's actually a sci-fi romance, but I know that Angela really loved the romantic element of it. And yeah, I know it's one of her favorite books. So I picked up a copy and we're gonna read it. What is this actually about? A proud and reserved alien society finds its homeland destroyed in an unprovoked act of aggression, and the survivors have no choice but to reach out to the indigenous humanoids of their adopted world to whom they are distantly related. They wish to preserve their cherished way of life, but doing so may mean changing their culture forever. Working together to save this vanishing race, a man and a woman from two clashing societies will uncover ancient mysteries with far-reaching ramifications. And as their mission hangs in the balance, the unlikely team, one cool and cerebral, the other fiery and impulsive, just may find in each other their own destinies and a force that transcends all. Okay, that does sound like a sci-fi romance. I'm, I'm excited. So. Those are the three books that I'm going to be reading for the purposes of this vlog. Let's see, does Angela have good taste? Are her recommendations worth all of the hype? We will find out. Hello, I don't have a whole lot to update you on, but because I had my nice filming setup going and makeup done, I thought I would let you know 
I have started to read The Best of All Possible Worlds by Karen Lord. I'm not very far in yet. I like started this before I went to bed and got like 18 pages in. But so far it's really interesting. I'm intrigued. It's very sci-fi. There's different worlds that different kinds of humans have colonized. And we've met our hero. He was away on a retreat when he finds out that most of his world had been like destroyed. And so now he is one of a handful of survivors who have to figure out like what they're gonna do. Are they gonna repopulate their culture? And so he and some other men are on this other planet for a while. And our heroine, I think, is kind of a diplomat a little bit. And so she's been assigned to work with them there as almost refugees for the meantime. And I think they're gonna end up having some kind of a romance. Don't know a whole lot yet, not that far into it. But so far, I'm liking it. The writing is really nice. The world is intriguing. And yeah. Hopeful this will be fun. I'll check back in once I've made more progress. Hello, I wanted to do a little bit of an update because I've started reading The Sword of Kaigen and I've been listening to it on audio while I clean and organize the house. My mom is coming tomorrow night to visit for a week, so I've been like doing some cleaning and organizing of like my desk and the house and various things. Let me show you my desk. So I organized the top of this. There used to be books up there and I decided to switch it up so that I now have books up here. Um, so yeah, some little little piece of the organization I've been doing. And uh, I have my, my reading spreadsheet open because of course. So I have gotten through a third of the book while doing that and I thought I should pop in with an update. I'm loving it loving it. I can see why people are so into it. I I don't know why, but I didn't necessarily expect to be a huge fan of it. I guess for some reason I thought it was going to feel much more focused on, I don't know, like samurai type fighting or something, which there is some fighting in it, but it's really about the characters. There's a lot of interesting political stuff happening. It's excellent. And there is, in fact, a mother character. She is one of the main perspective characters, and she is fascinating. I love her. She's in a really rough situation because even though she went to school outside of this island that's very patriarchal and very traditional, and uh, she had been a fighter even when she was younger, she was forced into this marriage to a man that she doesn't love and has had children with, but it's uh, a place where women are not even allowed to touch swords and she's not allowed to talk about her past. And you know, she loves her children and she wants what's best for them and wants to protect them. And the other main perspective character is her son who's like 14 years old and is learning that perhaps the world is not exactly the way he thought it was, that the government has taught them propaganda about the, them having won the war single-handedly and not lost lives to it, which is not the case and uh, is kind of questioning everything. And it's so good. I just like want to keep listening to it. I've breezed right through the first third of it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like I'm really, really into it. If this keeps up, this might end up being a new favorite for me, honestly. So I'm, I'm really pleased. I think it works out nicely to have a younger character and an older character for the perspectives. And then we also get flashbacks to when the mom was younger before she got married when she was like 20 or something. And so it offers just this really interesting fleshed out group of character perspectives. The world is an interesting one because it mixes magic and technology because it is set in a pretty modern time, but on an island with really old traditional values. So it's interesting because there are elements that are modern and when people come in from the outside they bring some of that with them but the way that they live societally feels more like feudal Japan. It's fascinating and I am really loving it. So um, wanted to give an update. So far, Sword of Kaigen, definitely a good pick. Okay, I am more than halfway through, but not quite two thirds. So I've read a good sized chunk and I'm continuing to love this. There's quite a bit of action, but I feel like her fight scenes are actually interesting 
which is sometimes a problem for me where things get a little too fighting or action heavy. I'm really liking it. It's intense for sure, but this mom Misaki is such a badass. Like seriously, the way that she can fight is amazing. Yeah, I'm really, really loving this. It's great. I've ended up getting through a lot of the book today. I need to pause because Leanna and I are about to record a podcast episode about Best Served Cold by Joe Abercrombie, which was great, so that'll be fun. Um, but I anticipate probably finishing the book up tomorrow. So I finished Sword of Kaigen and I freaking loved it. It was so good. Um, <laughs> my mom is coming tonight. So this worked out nicely. I had a lot of a lot of things to do today and I have now ordered myself a physical copy of the book because I love it so much. I just uh, like I can't I don't want to spoil anything for people who haven't read it, but it's so good. Like the characters and the relationships and it's it's so good. Like this is a great fantasy novel to read. I think if you are an older adult, if you are a parent, although heads up in terms of content warnings, there are such things as people losing children, either through abduction or through death and miscarriages. So they're, you know, like you do have to kind of be in the right headspace for that. But I, yeah, I I loved it. I loved the the character arcs that it took, and I loved how she and her husband eventually came to understand each other better, and the way it kind of unpacked that. I just this this book was amazing. Also, the politics are really interesting. I want more. I want to read more in this world. I kind of appreciate the way this book is pushing back on racial essentialism and things being all tied to pure bloodlines because it's the kind of thing where that is explicitly how a lot of people feel. They're like hyper nationalist or very family line oriented and it's like you don't want impure bloodlines because it diminishes the magic. But is that actually true? Maybe not. So yeah, I just think this book is subtly pushing back on some of those things. Also, it's this patriarchal, highly gender segregated society. Women exist to have children and carry on bloodlines. And so marriage would always be between a man and a woman because why else would you get married? And, you know, they're made for each other. And so there's, you know, it's not a main part of the book, but it is interesting towards the end, she finds out about a friend of hers who was gay, who married a man and lost his family as a result of it, and how painful that is, but also that he found love with his husband. And we have this woman who is a badass and a very talented fighter, even though that is not what is expected or even wanted of her gender. So yeah, I just, I like it, but it's not beating you over the head with it. There's a lot of nuance to the way that it's done. Everything about this was great. I would say I would give this six stars, which for me is what I give to a favorite of the year. So, so far, well done, Angela. I'm impressed. I loved Sword of Kaigen way more than I think I was expecting to. And now I hope she puts out another book soon. I wonder what's happening with that. I had had to read some other things for like live shows and stuff. So I've still not made any more progress on the best of all possible worlds, but I'm going to get back to this and I will update you once I've made some more progress. And then I have both a physical and an audiobook of Nine Fox Gambit. So I think I might do a blended read for that because I feel like that might help me wrap my head around <laughs> whatever's going on in that book as well. So I will touch base, but so far, this has been a win. Hello, it's been a minute. I have not done a lot of clips in the last few days, although I'm gonna put in a few things as I'm talking. I had a very busy week. My mom came to visit, which was great. I did a lot of really fun New York-y things. She took me out for my birthday to do a couple fun things. We went and had fancy high tea at the Plaza Hotel. It was 
amazing, beautiful, delicious. That was really fun. We went to Central Park. We saw a lot of different cool things in New York. We went to see a Broadway play and it was phenomenal. It was Funny Girl and this is the first time they've brought back Funny Girl since Barbara Streisand did it. Currently the lead role is being played by Jonah Hill's sister and she was excellent. The show was incredible and also pretty body positive, which was cool. Loved it. That was really fun. We just like we had a, a really busy, fun time. And then I got to go away for a couple of nights with my husband, not too far away, but it was fun. I didn't really get a lot of photos and videos of that because I think by that point I was just sort of exhausted because it was such a long week. But we also had a good time. We went to a comic book shop, picked up a couple things. It was fun. Um, in all of that time, have I gotten very much reading done? No. Did I read a little bit? Yes. Yes, I have made a bit more progress on the best of all possible worlds. Let me grab that. So I am farther. I'm 86 pages in. I am really liking it. I think it's interesting. It's building out these different cultures and there are people with telepathy, which is kind of interesting and like emotional, like, like emotional powers sort of where they can some of them telepathically can like feel or influence the emotions of other people so that that makes for some interesting things and yeah I don't I don't know that I have super strong feelings about it yet but I am liking it I'm enjoying it and in the next couple of days I am planning on really diving into this and giving you my full thoughts on a full update so this video is definitely gonna go up later in the month than I had planned because I oh so foolishly thought I could still get reading done with all the things happening. I did not get much reading done, folks. But I will be back soon with my thoughts on the best of all possible worlds. I I might even be able to finish it tonight, honestly, because I it's not a very long book. It's 300 pages. So I have just over 200 pages left in this. So I'm going to try to finish this up tonight and then get going on the last book and we'll see how how is Angela's taste? Should I have listened to her? Let's find out. Hey everybody. So I wanted to do an update for the best of all possible worlds. I have read quite a bit more. I had planned on finishing it yesterday and um, and then this school shooting in Texas happened and uh, yeah, I that <laughs> like following um, the coverage of that is like all I could do <laughs> for hours. Um, yeah. And I, that coming in the wake of what just happened at the grocery store in Buffalo, New York, um, I just, it's a lot. And like, we need policy changes. And it, you know, as a parent with two young kids, this hits home even more so and is just incredibly heartbreaking. Um, so today I am trying to get back somewhat into a normal routine while also thinking about like practical things that can be done, you know, whether that's like locally going to city council meetings, um, contacting representatives because like policies have to change. Th that's, that's what it comes down to. Gun policies have to change. Anyway. This is not what this video is about, but uh, that's what's been a lot on my mind. Um, I have made some more progress in the best of all possible worlds. This is where I'm at. I have about 100 pages left in it, so I'm going to try to finish that up today. I am, I am definitely liking it. I will say in some ways it feels like a series of vignettes. It's very kind of character driven. It's definitely not plot driven. And there are moments where I'm kind of like, where is this going? And then something interesting will happen. And I do like the characters. I think the world is an interesting one. There's a lot of interesting sort of vignettes and the way it's exploring things like telepathy and emotion. And yeah, I don't know that I would call this a romance which I don't know that Angela even did anyway. I think she just said that like she loves the romance in it. There is like a super slow burn romance that I think is going to happen. 
even though our main character has been like seeing other people along the way. I'm gonna put this down because my arm is getting tired. But but yeah, I wouldn't necessarily call it a sci-fi romance, but it does have a romantic subplot. And I, I feel like at some point in the next hundred pages, these people are gonna are gonna get together. They're more like colleagues, but they clearly have feelings for each other. It is interesting though, too, how there are different cultures who have different ways of handling their feelings, different levels of being expressive. Anyway, I am I am definitely liking it. I don't see this being a favorite for me in the way that it is for Angela. Uh, like if I was going to rate it right now, it would be like a four, four and a half star, but I am liking it. It's going well. So I'm going to try to finish this up and I will check back in. I finished reading The Best of All Possible Worlds and I, I think my feelings are pretty similar to my last update. I definitely like it, but I don't know that it was quite what I was expecting. So there's a quote on the front that calls it a picaresque quest. And I was like, what does picaresque mean? I don't remember. So I looked it up and it means episodic. And I was talking earlier about the fact that this book feels like a series of vignettes in some ways. And so yes, picaresque does seem like a good word for this. It does feel episodic. It's like you're following this character through a couple of years and focusing on specific episodes of things that take place in her life as kind of a, a diplomat slash scientist, which is interesting, but definitely not what I would typically expect from a sci-fi book. I guess Ursula K. Le Guin, some of her writing feels similar in terms of it not having a traditional plot that's pulling you through it. And it's more about the characters and learning in bits and pieces about the world and the culture. That's kind of what this is doing. So I can see why there might be comparison to Ursula K. Le Guin in this. There are definitely some interesting sci-fi elements that get introduced at different points. I've mentioned the telepathy. There also ends up being some kind of like multiversal time travel -y stuff. I won't get into any specifics there, but there's that. But it's interesting because th those pieces are never really the focus. It's the characters and kind of the situation they're in. It does have this love story that's super slow burn and very like low key, I guess. And I liked it. Again, not a new favorite for me, but I did enjoy this and I do want to read more from Karen Lord. I think the way she writes stories and characters is pretty interesting. So if that sounds up your alley, if you are into this kind of sci-fi where it's less about the plot or at least less about an overarching plot and more kind of episodic following different characters, in in these like bureaucratic diplomatic roles, which is again, like a little bit different from what we typically get in sci-fi, it's definitely worth reading. So definitely not mad I read it. I can see this being a book that would really not be for some people, but other people might love it. I think for me, I'm probably gonna land on about a four star rating. So I would call that a success. I did start reading Nine Fox Gambit by Yoon Ha Lee. I'm not far in yet, about 20 pages, and so far I'm into it. It's really interesting. This is definitely a book that sort of drops you right in the middle of an action sequence, doesn't hold your hand through the world building or understanding what exactly is going on, and it's, it, it's clear that you have to just kind of go with it. But I'm really intrigued. Some of the, the systems that feel almost magical for the, even though it's not, it's it's like such advanced math and science that it feels like magic, but it's really interesting. And there's clearly some complex political and religious structures that are affecting things. The main character that we've met so far, Captain Kel Cheris, is the head of a military unit. But what's interesting is that they defend using these formations that are all determined by geometry and advanced mathematics that are somehow used to do different things and have different effects. It's pretty cool and really interesting. And on a given planet, the way that their formations work are affected by whether people locally follow the calendar of the hexarchate, the political religious structure, or follow something else, or don't follow it very well, or follow some kind of heretical calendar, and that affects like the mechanics 
of the math and defense. It's wild, really interesting. I can see how for somebody who wants to be eased into a story, who wants to easily fully understand everything that's going on, this might be a struggle. But if you can just kind of go with it, I, I think this could be fun. Again, not far in yet. I've only read the first chapter, but so far I'm liking it. <sighs> My skin is having a moment this week, but uh, I am a little more than halfway through Nine Fox Gambit and I am loving it. <laughs> It's so good. It's so smart. And like, I, I feel like Yoon Holly is smarter than I am. The world building. Mommy. So cool. Good morning. I got interrupted by my kid when I was trying to film a clip last night. And then things were busy with bedtime. And then I had a live stream. So I'm eating some breakfast and listening to the audiobook. I don't have a whole lot left in it. I'm pretty close to the end. And I'm really into it honestly it's so smart i think what i was saying before i was interrupted yesterday is i just feel like yunali is definitely smarter than i am but i am really enjoying the way that he's writing sci-fi like the use of advanced mathematics is so interesting and i love all of the nuances of the political stuff and like i'm also just like really curious about the the motivations of this undead general because the, the main character, right, is this woman who's asked to tackle like a big problem militarily. And she requests basically this general who had betrayed everybody like hundreds of years earlier, but his consciousness has been trapped. And so anyway, I don't know, like it's a lot. It's very complicated to explain, but he's such an interesting character. So he's kind of living inside her head for the duration of their mission. And like what exactly his motivations are is unclear and like why he betrayed the empire is also a little bit unclear. And I'm just like, it's, it's really interesting and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I just feel like it's kind of a hard book to talk about because it's so complex and detailed, but it's really good and really interesting. And it's this mix of like, military strategy, political stuff, and like interesting sci-fi things. So anyway, I'm gonna keep going. I will check back in later. Hello, this is probably the most uh, sort of put together my face has looked in a while, but um, I finished reading Nine Fox Gambit and uh, it's amazing. I need to read the rest of the series. Yeah, this was a really good pick. I'm really glad I read it. People talk about how complicated it is. And if I'm being honest, I was feeling very intimidated by this book for a while. I was like, okay, is this going to be too hard? Am I not going to understand what's going on? Am I going to just feel really dumb reading this? And I would say not really. I mean, it is complicated. Do I fully understand all of what Yoon Ha Lee is doing in terms of the world building and the use of mathematics? No, definitely not. But do I understand enough to get where the plot is going, understand what he's trying to do, follow the narrative and the characters? Yeah, absolutely. I do think this is the sort of thing where you really have to be willing to just sort of go with it. If you're the kind of reader who is like, I have to completely understand everything I'm reading and I'm gonna keep stopping and like reading this over and over again, hoping I'm gonna somehow understand all of the details, that's not gonna work for this. You kind of have to go with it, like take in what you can as you go and just assume that you won't understand everything and that eventually it'll kind of start to make sense. I feel like that's the sort of book this is. It is excellent. It's so nuanced. It's, I mean, like the world building I've talked about, right? Like there's a lot of detail and a lot of nuance to the world building, but also the characters are really interesting and complicated. The plotting is really intricate and sophisticated, and it's engaging with some larger questions that we see a lot of this kind of science fiction engage with again, in really interesting nuanced ways, questions of humanity and personhood, questions of empire and power and governmental structures and what is and isn't okay, war and the loss of life that comes with that and like the horrors of it versus the necessity, maybe possibly of it. It's really interesting. It's really nuanced. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. So I think this was a really great suggestion. Definitely a five star read for me. Does it quite come to the level of a six star favorite of the year? I'm not sure. I have to sit on it. I'm not like I'm not sure. But this would definitely be 
among my favorite sci-fi books that I think I will read in 2022. So a very high five star. So wrapping this up, I did I tell you I decided to go ahead and order myself a copy of Sword of Kaigen because I loved it so much. And so now I have a physical copy. <laughs> so I read these three books that I purchased because of Angela at Literature Science Alliance. So the question is, can we trust Angela? Can we trust her reviews, her taste in books? And I think this is an interesting question because all three of these books are really good, but are not books that I would necessarily recommend to everyone. I do think the one that's probably going to be most universally liked is sort of Kaigen. This I think does have something for almost anyone, but it is kind of a long fantasy book. It's not necessarily super fast paced. It takes its time with the world building. It spends a lot of time on character development and there is action, but it's not constant action. So even this won't necessarily be everyone's cup of tea, but I do really love it. This was an easy six star read for me. Definitely one of my favorite books I've read this year. And I think for me, the thing that elevated this is not only that I enjoyed it, not only that I think it's a really excellent indie fantasy title, but also that it resonated with me on an emotional level in a way that I think is going to stick with me. So really, really loved this. The other two are such interesting and very different versions of science fiction. This like episodic, quiet, romantic, diplomatic kind of approach to sci-fi is really interesting. And while I liked it, I would not recommend this to everybody. I think there are a lot of people who would find it boring or feel like there's not enough plot that's kind of pulling them through it. But if you're the kind of person that likes something that's a little slower, a little more character focused, who doesn't necessarily need a plot pulling you through the book and are maybe interested in reading something with a little bit of a literary style to it. I do think it's very good and I wish I saw more people talking about it because I think it's a really interesting book. Nine Fox Gambit, oh man, this, I mean, this is an excellent piece of science fiction. And honestly, the more that I'm talking about this, the more I might be talking myself into a six star. At the very least, it's like a, a high five. This is an excellent piece of science fiction and it is fast paced, blink and you miss stuff. This is the kind of thing that I could see having a high degree of rereadability just because you might catch stuff on another read through. It's very twisty. I love it, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend it to people who want something that's easy to read, where they don't have to really think very hard about what they're reading, where they want to be able to easily understand everything that's happening maybe this wouldn't be for them. That said, if you are a sci-fi reader, like if you pretty regularly read in the sci-fi genre and you felt intimidated by this, I would really recommend you give it a try. I think for seasoned sci-fi readers, this isn't going to be too much for you. It might be a little bit on the complex side, but I really don't think it'll be too much. I would not recommend this as a good place to start in science fiction for people who are not into it already. I actually think for people who are new to sci-fi, who like more episodic stories, who are into more kind of literary fiction, for instance, The Best of All Possible Worlds isn't a bad place to start in terms of getting into sci-fi. I feel like this might kind of be a good option. So can we trust Angela? I would say yes. I think you can trust her. And one thing that I like about Angela's reviews too is she also does a pretty good job of giving you a sense of whether this would be a book for you. And I appreciate the fact that she recognizes that not every book is for every person and that's okay, that we can love a book that may not resonate for everyone. Regardless, I am so glad that I finally got around to reading all three of these books. In fact, Nine Fox Gambit is on my yearly sci-fi fantasy TBR of books that I wanted to read this year, so this worked out really nicely. Angela, thank you for pushing me to pick these up. I'm glad I took your recommendations and I will continue to probably take more in the future. And I would love to hear from you all in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts. Have you read any of these three books? After watching this, are you more interested in reading some of them than you were before? I'd love to hear kind of your feedback. And for question of the day, tell me about a book that you picked up on the recommendation of a content creator. It doesn't have to be me, it could be anybody, but is there a content creator who talked about a book that you were like, oh my God, yes, I need to read that and picked it up. And how did that go? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time.